Hello and welcome to Apply Database 1. In a previous session, we introduced data, relational database, and database management systems. We learned that a database management system can manage the extreme amounts of data an organization dealing with on a daily basis. In addition, we listed different database design approaches or types, which could be designing from existing databases or database, designing from scratch, we don't have a database, we don't have anything yet, and the database redesign through migration or integration. But before we start the, the first approach, designing from existing database, and before using any code, we need to understand the relational model and how it works. The relational model describes the data that is represented by records, which are organized and grouped into relations. It was a concept that was introduced by IBM Engineer Code since 1970, and it was, or it was used as the standard model for uh, commercial database management system products. Some of the important terms used in the relational model are the entity, the relation, the functional dependency, determinant, candidate key, composite key, primary key, surrogate key, foreign key, referential integrity constraint, uh, normal form, and multi-value dependency. Those terms can be considered as the components of the relational model, and we will go over each one of them uh, separately. So to start building the relational database, we need to identify the entities or the things that we need to track into the system. For example, in a retail store, we might be interested in tracking customers, products, sales, orders, employees, and transactions. While in a school, uh, we might be interested in tracking students, classes, grades, graduation, employees, programs, classrooms, buildings, and so on. The hospital, on the other hand, will be interested in tracking patients, patients' history, lab orders, imaging orders, pharmacy orders, physicians, departments, rooms, buildings, and so on. For each organization, they have their own entities or they have main entities to track. Some entities might have sub-entities within uh, uh, the same organization or the same institution. For example, school employees can be separated into three major sub-entities, faculty, staff, and admins. Faculty are considered as employees, uh, staff considered employees, and admins are considered employees. So we can separate them into sub-entities if we need, or we can keep, keep the main entity, which is employees, as the main entity for the institution. That will be based on how the database uh, being structured to be more efficient when I'm doing the query or when uh, I'm trying to uh, add or delete or manipulate that database to get some information. Once we identify the entity, we start collecting information about their attributes. The entity's attributes. And attributes is just a property that describes an entity such as the name. So we have the student, but what's the name of that student? What's their street address? What's their ID? What's their email address? And so on. So we are trying to collect information about uh, that entity that we are dealing with. It's also called field or column. So that attribute will be saved in what we call a column. For example, the fields or columns listed in this slide are attributes of student entity. So this is the main entity, student. But we put the attributes in columns. So we have student ID as one of the columns. And under that, we can put student ID number one, number two, three, and so on. The name, we put the first name, last name, a street address for that student, email for that student, and so on we can add as many columns as we need for that entity to describe that entity. 
attributes that relates to a specific entity will be arranged in what's called a tuple. A tuple is a single row in a relational database. Just one row is called a tuple or a record. Tuple or a record. So the tuple is just one record here that we have in the database. It's also called an instance. So it's a tuple a record or an instance because it's one it's considered as one instance of that entity the example in this slide shows a table or a record that uh, uh, shows John's uh, record so this is John's record to review what's being stated so far the giving example is for student entity so we have an entity that's called student the attributes that we have is the student ID first name last name street address city state zip code and those are attributes or what we call fields or columns and John's record or table is the first record here with ID number one two three four five instance one instance of an entity called student with the following attribute or attributes the group of tables now when we put all these records together uh, it will be stored in what we call a relation which is uh, a special type of a table it's a table but it's a special type of a table all records will be related and addressing the same entity so when we have all these records together it will be addressing the same type of entity the relation in this slide is providing the list of attributes for employees uh, or the employee entity uh, which means all the people listed are employees in different departments so maybe they are in different departments like the accounting finance production legal but all of them are employees in the same company so the entity will be employees if we have an entity called students then all the names under that will be students if we are dealing with an entity uh, which is called patients then all the names listed under that relation will be called uh, or will be for patients so a relation is a two-dimensional table that has the following characteristics it has rows that contain data about an entity it has columns um, contain data about attributes of that entity describe that entity uh, all uh, entries uh, in a column are of the same kind for example or in, uh, entries under zip code will be only for zip code value no other values can be listed under zip code in other words phone numbers cannot be listed under the column zip code each one of these attributes or columns has a unique name and should be repeated in the same relation if it should not be repeated uh, in the same relation uh, if it is called a relation then each cell will hold a single value the order of the columns is uh, unimportant the order of the rows is unimportant no two rows may be identical for example we cannot have the same information for John Doe twice so again if you notice that we don't care about the order um, who will be the first in their name as long as we have their information we can look up the name first name last name or the ID and then I will get the information about that student or that patient um, we cannot repeat the same name for the column 
so we have a column that says email there is no other column that will say email it's only one column with that attribute a table in this slide is considered a relation but has cells with values of varying length which is fine still it's a relation again we said that the relation is a special case of a table so this relation here is considered or this table here is considered a relation this table is considered a relation the only thing that we have under comments as a field we have varying length of that um, entity uh, that attribute varying length of that attribute so this attribute we can add as much as we want it's not limited and it's uh, put under comments and that's why we don't have limitation and some of them will have like three lines some of them is just one one and a half line so on so you're not limited or you you don't have a standard like uh, the phone or the email or the department or so on while um, for comments you can add as many lines as you want um, and you will be um, uh, actually uh, you can control the number of words by the number of characters that will be allowed in that cell and we'll talk about that later but if we have multiple values in one cell as shown in the table here then it's not considered as a relation we cannot make this as a relational database it's not a relation it's a table but it's not a relation why because in the same cell we have three different phone numbers and we cannot use that in a relation we call this as multi-value uh, or multi-valued um, cell and we'll deal with this later on um, we will know how to deal with these type of tables to make them a relation in some cases uh, they separate uh, those in a cell but they put facts home facts home um, this is also not a relation um, trying to rearrange the data in alphabetical order the facts and home numbers will be lost between the different records based on that this table is not considered as a relation so now we know the difference between a table that can uh, create a relational database and a table that cannot be used as um, a part of a relational database so this one this table is not a relation and cannot be used in a relational database although not all tables are relations that term table and relations um, or relation are normally used interchangeably uh, this slide shows that set of terms uh, that are equivalent and can be used interchangeably so uh, you know in some cases you will see um, uh, people using those terms interchangeably uh, making it the same term which is table the, exactly the same as the relation uh, exactly the same as a file um, again you know although it's wrong to do that but you know you will find it in some textbooks that um, they use this kind of terms or these terms interchangeably uh, also they use the um, term column attribute or field any of those are uh, considered um, the same and they uh, represent the same uh, term or the same thing uh, in a database uh, the same for raw tuple and record the same so just remember those terms and um, remember that all um, these three means the same those three means the same and those uh, three means the same 
that will be all for this session if you have any questions please feel free to contact me through the provided channels and we'll continue talking about the relational model in the next slide thank you and have a great day